Hello, everyone, uh, and thank you for participating in the fiscal year 2022 Department of Education's Fulbright Hayes Group Projects Abroad Short Term Technical Assistance Webinar. My name is Corey Neal. I'm the GPA Program Manager. Please note that we will be conducting two separate webinars this year for GPA short term projects and GPA long term projects. This technical assistance workshop will focus on the short term projects. Both webinars have been pre-recorded and can be accessed through the Department of Education's GPA website. The agenda for our technical assistance workshop is as follows. We will review the purpose of the GPA short term program. We will also review the competition highlights as referenced in the NIA. We'll discuss the eligibility requirements for both applicants and participants. We'll review each of the short term project types and discuss each of the project phases for the short term projects. We will go over allowable cost. We will review the selection criteria and the process for selecting awardees. And lastly, we will provide some helpful tips for developing a competitive application. The GPA short term program is, to design, is designed to promote, improve, and develop modern foreign languages and area studies throughout the educational structure of the US. The program gives K through 12 teachers, faculty, undergraduate, and graduate students opportunities to conduct research and studies abroad in modern foreign languages and area and international studies. We define area studies as the study of the aspects of a society or societies, including the study of their geography, history, culture, economy, politics, international relations, or languages. For FY 2022, uh, for our GPA grant competition, we estimate to make uh, a, a award, awards that range from 50,000 to 180,000. Uh, this uh, this is a change in previous years where the maximum award amount has been 100,000. We have increased that for FY 2022 to 180,000. Something something you should take note of there. Uh, our estimated average size of awards is just over 100,000, and the estimated number of short-term awards uh, is approximately 10. Of course, that can change depending on the uh, the amount of applications we receive, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, for FY 2022, the absolute priority for this competition is that a group project focuses on one or more of the following geographic regions of the world. Uh, Africa, East Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific. The Western Hemisphere, uh, including Central and South America, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Uh, Eastern and Central Europe and Eurasia, and the Near East. Please note that GPA short term projects that focus on Western Europe will not be reviewed. And these countries include Andorra, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Malta, Monaco, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. Uh, in addition to the absolute priority, GPA short term applicants can earn additional points if they address the following competitive preference priorities or CPPs. Uh, the first one, um, GPA short term applicants can earn three additional points if applicants are one of the following types of institutions or organizations. Uh, that would be minority serving institutions, community colleges, new applicants, or state educational agencies. Um, please note that community college means an institution that meets the definition uh, in Section 312F of the Higher Education Act of 1965 as amended um, in the Higher Education Act 20 USC 1058F or an institution of higher education as defined in Section 101 of the Higher, institution at, uh, higher Education Act 20 USC 1001 that awards degrees and certificates more than 50% of which are not bachelor's degrees or an equivalent. New applicant means any application that has not received a discretionary grant from the Department of Education under the Fulbright Hayes Act prior to the deadline date for applications under this program. The applicant is not the program director. Uh, applicant refers to the institution applying for funding. And state educational agency means the state board of education or other agency or officer primarily responsible for the supervision of public elementary and secondary schools in a state. In the absence of this officer or agency, it is an officer or agency designated designated by the governor or state law. 
moving on with more of our competitive preference priorities. GPA short-term applicants can earn two additional points if they propose projects that provide substantive training and thematic focus on any foreign modern uh, languages, except for French, German, and Spanish. Proposals must provide a minimum requirement of 20 hours towards language training on a less commonly taught language throughout the duration of that project to be eligible to apply. When it comes to that 20 hours towards language training, that needs to be uh, stated in your um, application narrative, um, or it can also be demonstrated in your um, host country itineraries, but uh, it, it needs to be uh, a minimum requirement of 20 hours towards that language training. Okay, uh, next, GPA short-term applicants can earn two additional priority points for focusing on projects that develop and improve foreign language studies, area studies, or both at elementary and secondary schools by including K-12 teachers or K-12 administrators as at least 50% of the project participants. And new to FY 2022, uh, I, competitive preference priority five, which is the thematic focus on academic fields. Applicants that propose short-term projects abroad in modern foreign languages and area studies with an academic focus on any of the following academic fields, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, computer science, education, international development, political science, public health, or economics. Again, this is a new priority uh, for 2022. I advise that when applying for competitive preference points, applicants include this information not only in your project narrative, but also in your abstract. You want to make it very clear which CPPs you are applying for and try not to make readers search for this information, but we'll talk about that a little more later on. Okay, next I'll cover applicant and participant eligibility requirements. Eligible applicants for FY 2022 cycle uh, are institutions of higher education state departments of education, private nonprofit educational organizations, and a consortia of institutions, departments, and organizations. An individual is eligible, el eligible to participate in a GPA short-term project if he or she is a citizen, national, or permanent resident of the United States, meaning that they have a green card, and an individual who is currently employed full-time in a United States school system, institution of higher education, local education agency or state education agency. Um, individuals who are not currently employed and or studying full time or its equivalent are not eligible. The program will allow a combination of teaching and studying at 100% total to be eligible. Okay, continuing on with participant eligibility. Participants must be a teacher in an elementary or secondary school, um, a faculty member who teaches modern foreign languages or area studies, um, could be an experienced education administrator responsible for planning, conducting, or supervising programs in modern foreign languages or area studies at the elementary, secondary, or post-secondary levels, or a graduate student or junior or senior in an institution of higher education who is a prospective teacher in the areas of social sciences, humanities, and foreign languages, um, please note that graduate students or juniors or seniors do not have to be working full time to be eligible. Uh, the students should, I'm sorry, going back, the students uh, should meet the provisions set by his or her late local and state educational agencies. Okay, there are three types of GPA short term projects. These include short term seminars, short term curriculum development projects, and uh, short-term groups, group research or study. Let's break down those projects. The short-term seminars projects typically last four weeks and are designed to promote the integration of international studies into the social sciences and or humanities curriculum throughout US school systems at all levels. Uh, they increase linguistic and or cultural competency among US students and educators and they focus on a particular aspect of area study, such as the culture of an area or a portion of the culture of the country of study. The curriculum development projects are, general, are generally four weeks in length and allow for participants to acquire firsthand resource materials, including artifacts, books, documents, educational films, recordings, museum reproductions, and other instructional material for curriculum development in modern foreign language and area studies for use and dissemination in the United States. And lastly, 
our third short term project is the group research or study. These projects are typically three months in length and are designed to give participants the opportunity to undertake research or study in a country outside of the United States. Unlike the other two short term project types, participants in a group study project must possess the, the uh, requisite language proficiency and, and, and uh, disciplinary comp competence in their area of research. The grantee should conduct a language assessment pretest to determine a participant's language proficiency. And let's look at these three uh, and talk numbers here. For short term seminars and curriculum development projects, the minimum time spent in the host country again is four weeks. This does not include the pre departure orientation in the United States. Uh, the grant performance period is 18 months. If you choose to spend the minimum four weeks in country, then you must include 12 participants in one project director for a total of 13 individuals traveling. The maximum grant award for both seminars and curriculum development again has been changed from 100,000 to 180,000. This information can be found on pages 15 and 16 of the application package. Group research projects are designed to undertake research or study in a country outside of the United States. The length of these projects is from a minimum of 12 weeks to as long as 12 months. The minimum number of participants is three, uh, including one project director, bringing your total travelers to four individuals. Participants must have a minimum of one semester intensive language and one course in related area study. Uh, again, the maximum grant award for this is also $180,000. And this information can be found on page 17 of the application package. OK, we highly, highly, highly encourage, especially um, given our uh, current situation with um, COVID impacting travel, we highly encourage each applicant to check the State Department's website for alerts and warnings. As GPA applicants proposing travel to a country that is closed to Fulbrighters will be disqualified. The countries on this slide are the current countries that are closed to Fulbrighters. If you are unsure of a specific country, please feel free to contact me at gpa at ed.gov. As a reminder, we have received several inquiries about Cuba and Egypt as possible destinations for a GPA project. Uh, for FY 2022, these countries are closed to Fulbright GPA programs. Another question uh, that I have been receiving lately is in regards to countries that are not on uh, this list, but may have um, a level four travel warning due to um, due to COVID travel restrictions. Um, in this case, your best bet is to contact me directly in regards to that host country, and I can better um, assist you. OK, grantees have 18 months to carry out their project activities. For fiscal year 2022, the proposed start and end dates are June 15th, 2022 to December 15th, 2023. These dates are not the exact dates of travel, but should be used as the proposed uh, sort of placeholder start and end dates. OK, let's talk about the GPA project phases. These phases include the pre-departure phase overseas and the post overseas or follow up phase. For the pre-departure phase, grantees should allot at minimum 16 hours towards, towards the pre-departure orientation. Uh, pre-departure preparation should consist of conducting a series of lectures on the country of study. Advanced reading material should also be sent to the participants several weeks prior to the pre-departure orientation. For the pre-departure orientation, we suggest that the applicants include guidelines on curriculum development if applicable. Uh, discussions on daily living, uh, discussions on travel in the host country. You might want to include team building exercise, uh, exercises, team assignments, and individual proposed projects, and some uh, basic language training. This sample, or this slide contains a sample uh, of a pre departure orientation schedule. Please make sure your pre departure orientation is detailed as demonstrated by this sample here. You may include a copy of your pre-departure orientation in the appendices of your application package, and it is highly recommended that you do so. If you would like a sample, on, uh, an, an additional sample pre-departure orientation, you may contact me and I'd be happy to provide you with another. OK, the next phase is your overseas phase. This is where you should provide detailed information on your in-country itinerary. 
Uh, these details could include a daily itinerary, uh, details about academic lectures, language study, field trips, cultural activities, uh, debriefings and evaluation, uh, travel arrangements and accommodations. Remember, the more information you provide in your project narrative, the more likely you are to receive a respectable score. It's all about the details. OK, next two slides provide a detailed in-country itinerary sample. Again, it is highly recommended that you, you include a copy of your day-to-day -day itinerary in your appendices. And again, if you would like a, an, an additional sample of an in-country itinerary, you can contact me directly. Uh, my email will be listed again at the end of the presentation. OK, uh, applicants should include in the follow-up phase an end of seminar evaluation to be completed by each participant to assess the quality of the overseas project. The Department of Education reviews each evaluation submitted by the participants to ascertain the success of the project and to provide suggestions for improvements should the grantee submit a subsequent application for funding. Applicants should include schedules for fo uh, formal follow-up and dissemination activities such as a uh, series of workshops, um, maybe uh, uh, discussions, curriculum meetings, presentations, um, critiques of lesson plans, reviews of curricular project uh, products for content, accuracy and appropriateness and preparation for publication. Applicants should also discuss how they will arrange follow up visits to the local area from host country educators to serve as guest lecturers during the summer and to speak in local education settings. This can result in an effective media blitz about the effectiveness of your GPA project, as well as significantly strengthen ties due to follow up visits. This is a sample chart containing an outline of follow up activities. This should also be included in your appendices. All right, let's talk money, uh, spe specifically the allowable cost for GPA short term programs. Funding can be used for the following. Lodging and meals, round trip international travel, and as a reminder, all flights to and from the United States must be Fly America Act compliant. Uh, any travel within the host country, educational materials purchased in the host country, meeting space with the host country, local administrative fees and services, and host country evaluators. It is very important to note that the grant does not provide funds for project related expenses with, within the United States, including US based salaries, pre departure orientation, if your pre departure orientation is held in the United States and any follow up activities in the United States. These items may be included as part of the applicant matching contribution. OK. Up next is selection criteria. So th this is the criteria that, that will be used to score your application. Here are your eight criteria uh, that you will need to address in your project narrative. Um, applicants can receive up to 100 points for addressing all of the selection criteria. And in addition to those 100 points, Applicants can receive up to nine additional points by addressing the competitive preference priorities that we mentioned earlier. Um, all of these items should be touched upon in great detail in your application narrative. Um, it is highly recommended, you know, you're, you are limited to 40, 40 pages for your application narrative. It is highly recommended that you use all 40 of those pages. Uh, the, the specifics and the details are key uh, to uh, having a successful GPA program. Just a bit of advice. OK, first, uh, let's talk about plan of operation. Your first criteria. This is worth 20 points. Applicants should introduce the reader to their institution or organization by providing statistics and other demographic information relevant to the project. The need for the project, the selection of the country of study, and the objectives of the project should also be discussed. The project design should be addressed. This generally includes the three project phases we just discussed. Applicants should note how each phase of the project is to be carried out and supported under the plan of operation. <clears throat> uh, continuing on with plan of operation, applicants should also address how the management plan will link all of the project phases and how it will effectively operate under all of project parties. Applicants should describe in which ways resources and personnel will be used in achieving the objectives of the project and include details of which key personnel will be responsible for vital project components and activities and describe the how, why, when and where project activities will take place. Please include a clear description of how projects 
will provide equal access and equipment for project participants, regardless of race, color, national origin, gender, age, or disability. Many applicants neglect to include this description, which does result in the point deduction. Okay. Next criteria is the quality of key personnel, and this is worth 10 points. Applicants should address the qualifications of the US project director, which includes their academic training, their field of expertise in the host country, the administrative experience, language, and other related qualifications. Also, it is important to note the project director's time commitment to the project. Uh, you also, uh, please, you should provide expertise of any other support staff, as well as their time commitment to the project. Um, you should also provide host country key personnel qualifications. These can include administrative staff, language teachers, assessors, and evaluators. Please be sure to include their titles, project responsibilities, and their time commitments to the projects. Applicants should also show as part of the institution's non-discriminatory employment practices how employment from underrepresented groups will be without regard to race, color, national origin, gender, age, or disability. And in the appendices section of your application, you should upload abbreviated CVs, which should be no more than three pages for each key personnel. Okay, budget and cost effectiveness. This is worth 10 points as well. Applicants should demonstrate and justify that all allowable expenses presented are adequate and reasonable in today's market and necessary to accomplish the project's goals. Applicants should discuss their project's cost effectiveness and show the relationship between the project's cost and the project's objectives. GPA programs do not require matching funds, but we do highly recommend using matching funds. In the budget narrative attachment, uh, you should upload a detailed itemized line budget and accompanying, accompanying budget narrative that clearly outlines how the costs have been calculated and are necessary to the project's objectives. Remember, short-term projects have an 18-month project period, so your budget should reflect those 18 months. Okay, here, uh, th this slide and the next slide contain an example of the budget sheet. We recommend that uh, applicants organize their budgets into three categories to indicate funding, funding streams, uh, which include the federal funds from the GPA grant, institutional funds, and the participant cost share. So the way that this has been uh, laid out uh, demonstrates that uh, very effectively, and it's very easy to read, and um, it's, it's, it doesn't leave readers searching for this information. Of course, um, you would attach this budget sheet uh, in your appendices and include, um, in addition to your line item budget, your budget narrative. OK, evaluation plan. This is worth 20 points. A well-designed evaluation plan includes clearly articulated goals, measurable objectives, both quantitative and qualitative, uh, a way to collect data to show progress, formal evaluations at each phase of the project, informal evaluations, which can take the form of uh, maybe midpoint debriefings or daily journals. To add credibility to the evaluation plan, we highly encourage using, using an external evaluator that is independent of the project meaning someone who is outside of your academic department or even possibly external to your institution. Evaluation instruments that will be used to collect data during all project phases should also be included in your appendices. And you should include a timetable um, to highlight when key components of the evaluation plan will occur. Uh, applica applicants will be required to develop the proposed goals and the project's specific performance measure uh, and activities on the performance measure form or PMF. The project goal statement on this example PMF is to increase the quality and relevancy of less commonly taught language materials. The performance measure to support this goal on this example is increase the number of instructional modules that could be integrated into existing curriculum. And an activity highlighted here is to identify and propose at the pre-departure orientation meeting two to three instructional modules to be developed during the group a broad period. Um, so you will be required uh, to develop um, uh, PMFs, and this should be included in your application. Uh, should the applicant become a grantee, they will be required to provide the data indicators as, or baseline numbers to include trend data similar to what we have on this slide. For more detailed information regarding evaluation plans, uh, please review the application package, uh, instructions in the application package. 
Uh, this slide is informational only. Uh, this is uh, specifically for successful GPA short term applicants. Um, successful GPA short term applicants will be required to collect data on the GPA GEPRA measures, specifically GEPRA measure two, and report this data to the Department of Education and their final performance reports. Um, this is just something to keep in mind as you're developing your project. Uh, the GEPRA measure is the percentage of GPA participants who disseminated information about or materials from their group project abroad through more than one outreach activity within six months of returning to their home institution. OK, moving on to our next uh, criteria, which is the adequacy of resources. This is worth five points. Here you want to ask yourself, what, re what resources will I use to accomplish the project goals I've outlined in my project, both in the US and abroad? You should indicate specifics regarding use of facilities, supplies, and other resources to show that they are adequate to carry out the activities in all phases of the project. In the appendices section, you should upload letters of support both from the US and support country institutions and individuals. Okay, potential impact is our next criteria. This is worth 15 points. Applicants should focus on the potential impact of the project on the development and improvement of the study of modern foreign languages and area studies on participating institutions of higher education, public and private schools. You should describe the possible long term benefits to project participants, their students, colleagues and communities resulting from successful completion of the GPA grant. Applicants should indicate the process by which resulting curriculum project research will be evaluated for accuracy and effectiveness. Relevance to institutional development is a criteria that is worth 10 points. Here, applicants should discuss the missions, goals, and objectives of the applicant institution, as well as what it would mean to have a GPA grant. The need for overseas experience criteria is worth 10 points. Applicants should discuss how their project will bring about a better understanding of the host country. You should also address the question, why this particular group to this particular place? And lastly, describe the relationship to the project and the institution's program development in modern foreign languages and area studies. Uh, Grants.gov appendices uh, will provide applicants with other attachments section, and I've touched on some things that, that you should include here. But again, uh, you should include a preliminary pre-departure orientation agendas, overseas project itinerary and follow up activities. You should include CVs of key personnel, and, and remember, uh, those should be three pages maximum per key personnel. Letters of support and examples of evaluation materials, a project timeline chart, project specific PMF forms with proposed measures and activities. At this time, I'd like to provide you with some tips on putting together a successful application package. As you're getting organized, we encourage applicants to review abstracts of funded grantees and past successful proposals located on the GPA website. We encourage applicants to develop in, in, internally and externally linkages that will assist you in putting together a solid application. For example, you may, you may wish to meet with relevant staff from the Grants and Contracts Office or coordinate with your colleagues on campus that have international education and grant experience to develop a robust plan of operation and management plan. In addition, applicants that have secured an external evaluator will send a strong signal to peer reviewers that you're serious about your evaluation. We strongly encourage applicants to review the FAQs on our website, which have been recently updated. We advise you to designate a management team with international and grants experience, identify your institution or department's needs and wants, uh, and request letters of support, both from the United States and abroad. We highly recommend that you review the Federal Register Notice and the GPA program website for updated information. Uh, lastly, and, and possibly most importantly, contact me if you have any questions at all. Uh, I will be happy to help. Um, you can contact me at gpa at ed.gov. When writing your proposal, make sure you address all selection criteria and the order listed in the application packet. Um, applicants, actually, let me go back to that. Um, when, when you are addressing all selection criteria in the order listed in the application package, it's very helpful to reviewers if um, you kind of subtitle your, your information. So when you are addressing your 
um, evaluation plan. You subtitle it evaluation plan and proceed with uh, your narrative and so on and so on for each of the specific criteria. Just a tip, it's just helpful for reviewers. It keeps everything nice and organized. And again, you don't want to have reviewers uh, searching for your information. Um, and with that, um, you should generate a table of contents that could be helpful in developing a highly organized application. Applicants should also provide a detailed plan of operation and, and evaluation and include sufficient details so that someone unfamiliar with your project could conduct it. Write clear, measurable goals, objectives, and outcomes. Provide a specific and detailed budget. Again, both the, the three sort of three columned line item budget that was given as an example previously and your budget narrative. Um, avoid grammatical errors and specific professional jargon and acronyms and use persuasive description descriptions of how your project operates. I can't stress enough how important it is to be clear, concise, and detailed. Okay, when submitting your application, make sure you register early in grants.gov to avoid any system issues. Save your written proposal to avoid any computer issues. If your institution is not funded, consult the reviewer comments and reapply. And please, please, please do not wait until the last minute to submit the deadline for your application uh, can be found in the video description below. If you are unable to locate that, again, you can contact me directly. All applicants, uh, regardless of their um, uh, status, funded or, or not funded, uh, will be notified of their results via email no later than September 30th, 2022, of course, we always hope to make our awards much earlier than that, but that is um, our absolute deadline. Scores and comments will be sent to all applicants via email and for successful grantees, be prepared to hit the ground running. OK, uh, these websites are helpful to you as you work on your application. You can find sample abstracts from past successful projects, sample narratives, submission instructions, and a link to our quarterly newsletter. Again, you can also contact me directly if you want any other samples, uh, pre-departure orientations, host country itineraries, budget sheets, etc. Okay, um, this uh, slide has a link to the GPA website as well as that contact information I have been giving out. Please, again, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am more than happy to answer any questions. Um, and one last note, uh, institutions are able to apply for more than one GPA grant. Uh, you can submit multiple short-term projects, you can submit multiple long-term projects, or you can submit a combination of short-term and long-term. If you choose to submit a long-term um, GPA project, please be sure to watch the long-term technical assistance webinar as the long-term applications have different requirements than short-term applications. You can find the long-term webinar at the International Foreign Language Education Office's YouTube channel. OK, thanks for taking the time to listen to the GPA short-term technical assistance webinar. I hope it will help you in putting together a competitive application. We wish you the best of luck and look forward to your application.